Hi guys, uh, this video about the injection pump, uh, one more. Since I came across some interesting stuff, uh, I figure I'm gonna document that and, and maybe put a video so everyone can understand better uh, what's happening in a pump when we are just a full range. That's, that's what mostly this video is all about, adjusting a full range uh, of fuel delivery. Um, see normally um, oh, there's plenty of information on it by Joe Alexander, Dr. Benz, Dan of course right and a few others. Um, the easiest way is, I have to agree with them, the easiest way is to just add or, or subtract shims from underneath the barometric compensator which, which normally goes here, I removed it and I will have a, another short video just on that subject because um, I found out some interesting stuff that I like to point out, but I need to dig out another pump to, to be able to show you guys. So, so that, that will be another video. Uh, here, what do we got on the pump? I, I had to take off the back plate uh, because I simply ran out of adjustment. So here it is, I will, I will, okay, here's the plate itself. And as you can see in the middle, there in the center, you got that adjustment screw, the one, the slotted screw that uh, you push in and kind of adjust click by click for your lower end for the idle. So that goes right here. And now you see how important it is that, that you don't touch that when, when the engine is running. You will just, I've seen that on my other, on M130 engine, I've seen that completely out. So of course there was no adjustment. Anyway, here everything looks good because I, I've done that, I've redone that whole pump uh, a few months back. So everything is good, but there was, uh, there was one thing that kind of bothered me a bit and I want to talk about it uh, today. I'm gonna move the camera directly on the, I got some better light. So hopefully we get a good shot uh, out of it. Okay, yeah, everything is going well, I hope. Uh, so, what's happening here? In the middle, this is, uh, as you know, this is low-end adjustment, okay, for your idle, and then mid-range, high and low, mid-range around, unless you have equipment, unless you have CO2, precise CO2 meters, and uh, good oxygen sensors on the exhaust don't touch those things because without equipment we can only make it worse okay never mind this video is not about that stuff so what i want to show you here is your full range adjustment which is this screw here which sits underneath that little bolt in on m127 pump underneath that bolt you unscrew that bolt and um uh, you get access to that screw. That screw works on the click basis, same as the uh, low end. So what you wanna use is uh, four or five millimeter blade. You, you don't want to go bigger because then it may not, some of the pumps will have that little sleeve and then you're not gonna be able to engage it properly. Again, you have to feel for it. It's kind of, um, it's all on it now, but I hope you can see that, that little groove right there. So you engage, when you engage, you don't have to take the cover off to engage. I, I had other reasons for it. So uh, since I have it off, I, I figured I decided to make the, the video and, and show everyone how everything actually works. Not only talking about it, not only writing about it, but actually showing how it works. So that screw here, is going into the rack and what's happening as you turn it clockwise to lean it this screw this is opposite to the idle you're turning it clockwise to lean it what's happening when you turn it clockwise you engage and one click what this you you push it in and turn one click okay so what happened then this limits the way the rack travels. The rack cannot can not travel as much when you turn that in. So, um, and same thing for the opposite. As you unscrew it, you allow 
for more rack travel and therefore allow for more fuel flow all across the band as the rack adjusts the fuel all across in all ranges, all RPM ranges. Now, to quickly touch on um, earlier um, advice uh, instead of, of using the barometric compensator shims, that's the guy that goes on top, right? This guy here. Um, this guy here that goes on top of the pump. So you can add shims uh, right underneath it. Okay, and different, different thickness shims will either push this farther down to uh, uh, smaller shims will push it farther down to limit the flow more or uh, thicker shims will pull it out and allow for higher flow. Now, how this works to in, in conjunction with the, with the full range uh, screw? Uh, basically, I can show you here uh, what's happening as the compensator is being screwed in as this guy, if, if this guy sits on top, okay, let's pretend that this guy is in there. I'm not going to put it in now. I'm just going to press the lever there. Um, so, um, as you're pressing it in, I hope you can see it, the, the rack is moving out. In other words, as you're pressing this in, let's see, I hope you can see the rack as I'm pressing it, here as I'm pressing this at the top so this is the same way as if I would be screwing the uh, barometric compensator in the farther that barometric compensator goes in the harder it presses on the rack on the side on that uh, lever here and pushes the rack out therefore allowing for less travel of the rack so the idea is exactly the same. You use this screw or you eliminate the shims from underneath the compensator. Compensator goes in deeper, allows for less travel, allows for less fuel. So as you can see, as I'm removing it, okay, I press it in, the rack goes out, less travel. I remove the, I remove the pressure from the barometric compensator, the rack goes in and therefore the travel is greater, allowing for more fuel to flow. I hope this explanation is good. I hope now you can visualize, you can totally understand what needs to be done and how it works. And it's only both adjustments work equally well. It's just in my case, I run out of adjustment because of other reasons. Uh, so. I had to open it. I forgot. I'm going to make the demonstrations because now it's so much easier to, to just fully understand how it works. I hope uh, this is a good explanation for you as well. And uh, I hope lots of you will have a better understanding of how this pump deliver fuel, how it limits and deliver more fuel at all RPM ranges. Thanks for watching and uh, like I said, I will have another uh, video on the very short one on the barometric pressure compensator as I found some very interesting um, stuff about it and how some of them differ and how some of them may actually cause problem with fuel delivery. Okay, but that's up for the next video. So thanks for watching. You guys enjoy. Have a great day. And I know I have a great day myself now because this thing is going to run like a puppy. Thanks.